Money in Excel. Adding and using categories and subcategories related to expenses or decreases from the checking account. Get ready because it's time to excel in money by using Money in Excel. Here we are in our Money in Excel worksheet. In prior presentations, we set up the Money in Excel worksheet connected to the financial institution. You can get access to the template for Money in Excel if you have some type of subscription model with Microsoft by going to the File tab on the left-hand side, going to New. You're looking for the Money in Excel model here, which will be either up top in New or down below. Once set up, I'm going to go back then to what we have thus far. You can then connect to the bank account to get your information. And now we're working on looking at and thinking about that information, how we might be able to sort it into, say, an income statement type of format. I'm imagining a situation where we have, for example, a full year of data maybe we need for 2020 in order to file a tax return. We pull in that information, categorize that information. We're looking for like an income statement to fill out something like a Schedule C, possibly having in one bank account or in one bank account and credit card accounts and whatnot transactions that are mingled between business and personal and try to weed out the business information so that we can make an income statement with it. So that's kind of the, the process we're imagining here. And note that the data that we do have from the bank, if I hit the drop down, we do have all 2020 and 2019 information. We're going to look at 2021 just so I have a, a little bit less data, but you can use basically the full year's worth of data. So you might be able to pull that in. If you have a similar situation, you're trying to do that in, you're thinking, should I do it in Excel here or in like an accounting software like a QuickBooks or, or there are some free softwares out there that might be able to do an accounting type of software. We're kind of thinking of the pros and cons between the two methods. If you did do this in a QuickBooks, remember, you'd still have the financial transactions you could possibly pull in from the bank, but you still have to assign the accounts to them and so on and so forth and add them then so that they will get out of bank feed, what I call bank feed limbo here to the creation of the financial statements. If you're a small Schedule C business, you're basically looking to put together a, um, an income statement. Now note, as we go through the expenses, it'll become a little bit more apparent once again that if you're breaking out between like personal transactions and business transactions, which are on the same credit card and, and uh, the checking accounts and whatnot, then uh, it's a little bit different on how you have to do that. And, and accounting software can sometimes be a little bit more difficult even because you have to do the double entry accounting system. Whereas in Excel here, we're not really doing the double entry accounting system because what we're trying to do is just weed out the data so that we can whittle out what we need. In this case, we're thinking a business type of income information. So on the personal side of stuff, personal transactions, we're kind of trying to whittle that out or use that in some way that I can then format it somewhere else and mainly focus in on uh, the data here for the personal stuff. If I do that then in QuickBooks, I have to manage that a little bit differently because I have to use the double entry accounting system in QuickBooks. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. In prior presentations, we sorted this information. We sorted it last time by income so that we can see basically the, the biggest items up top on the income line. Now in this item, it might be easiest to sort now that we're looking at expenses by the merchant. Merchant is gonna come in from basically the bank memo data that we have. Remember that when you're thinking about the bank memo data in the merchant, we're thinking about vendors here but Excel is making up these vendors from memo data, so they're not going to be perfect. And you might want to then check your actual bank account and, and see what the bank account has in the memo compared to what's in Excel, because Excel has changed it to try to, to, try to guess what the best item would be. So I'm going to sort this. Let's sort this from uh, A to Z on now the merchant. Now it's kind of mingled in deposits and expenses, but we have the grouping here by the merchant item which will probably be the easiest way for us to add uh, the remaining the remaining items here. So we're focusing in on the decreases and we'll go into these to these items here. Remember that on the right hand side, this is going to be the categories. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing. If it's if it's personal, I'm going to take it out and try to whittle it out by putting it into personal. And then when we sort this data, it'll be easier for me to kind of pull out the stuff that's personal and just remove it because I'm really focusing in on the income side of things. And then we could subcategories categorize subcategorize the personal information as well so we can use it uh, for personal data as, as well if we need to but if you're thinking i need to schedule c right now your, your goal is basically to whittle out the personal data so that's what we'll kind of think about there and then of course we got to categorize our expenses they gave us these standard categories so they're going to try to categorize these expenses for us if we need to add any others we'll add them down below so let's go through this and we'll just kind of think about this we're going to say uh, American Express. 
So these are credit cards. So so notice this, they gave they gave us a category over here. They gave us a transfer category. So this might be going to like a like another credit card type of account, which we might then be adding to because you might have a credit card with transactions that are business related. But this is going to be the payment of the credit card. Now, if this was a double entry accounting system, then what I would want to do is basically net this out between a payment and a payable on the credit card side of things, possibly, or something like that. But because uh, I'm really only looking at the income statement side of things, what I really want here is something that I can use to pull it out of the income statement. Because what I'm doing is paying off the credit card. What I want are the credit card transactions, not the payment of paying off the credit card. So they put it into a category of transfer, and that could be a, a useful category for us to kind of uh, to pull it out of of the income statement to not include it on the income statement because what I want to include once again are the actual transactions on the credit card in the in the income statement which we could connect say to Excel if we so chose. I'm actually going to use another account to do that though because I'd like to give it an, an account number up top so that I can sort it by number it might make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to try to put it at the top once I sort it so I'm going to make it 1010 or 1015 let's say transfer and so, so that's going to be the item there. And then I'll, then I'll call it in the category type. I'm going to call it then a, a balance, and I'm going to call this a balance sheet item. And the reason I want a balance sheet item is got everything that's going to be related to the balance sheet. I'm going to kind of pull it up, pull it out of the income statement, one way to kind of sort it out here. So I'm going to call that a balance sheet item. So then I'm going to go back on over here and say, let's call this a number in front of it that'll help me sort it and it'll be a balance sheet item we could then create a subcategory if we so choose but i'm going to keep it at that so then we're going to go down to costco now costco it might be personal or it might be business let's imagine that it's going to be supplies or something like that that we have for costco for the business if it was personal obviously i would just simply put it to the personal area and then i might have a subcategory that i would put for the personal item I'm going to I'm going to say it's going to be for supplies. Notice it put it into shopping. Shopping, do we have a supplies item here? Supplies no. So I'm going to say supplies and then I'm going to call it an expense type of item. So we'll call it supplies. And so we'll put this as supplies. I'll put this on the bottom. So there we go. And then I'm not going to have any subcategories so everything that's Costco we shall put to supplies. And now, some of this you might end up be breaking out. You might say, well, some of it is, is personal and some of it is business. So you could then think about how to break them out. But it would be nice if all the transactions were going to one or the other. Now, this one, note we have a DBA. Why? Because it didn't pull over from the memo. This one might be an actual check that was written or something like that so we, we couldn't we couldn't basically pull it over possibly you can go into your bank account then and look at the actual transactions to see what the memo is there if it's a canceled check then you can actually look at the canceled check and get an idea of of what was paid i'm going to imagine that this was personal so let's say this is personal uh let's say well we can even change the merchant personal to whatever whatever it actually was or you know abc company abc company and then the category, I'm going to make it go to a personal category. So obviously they don't have the category correct here. So I'm going to put it to that personal category. And then if we want a subcategory to try to help break out the personal data, you wouldn't need this if you're just really looking for the business data. You just need to sort out the personal. But if you do want to sort it like the personal categories a little bit more, then you might call this a category. Uh, the category name is going to be, let's say, let's say personal uh, is going to be the category name. Let's hit the drop down there this way. We're going to say the category name is going to be the personal. And then we might put like restaurants or whatever we spent on. I'm going to call it fast food for the subcategory. So I'm going to say restaurant is going to be fast food. So I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to say this is going to be personal. 1010 personal fast food. And then this one's going to be 1010 personal and fast food. Okay, and then these are the income accounts we did last time. So now we're down here. So this is insurance. So the so we're going to say insurance, which could be business or personal. I'm going to say it's personal here. So we'll say once again, personal here. So I'm going to say this is personal. And we're going to say that this is going to be insurance. I'll call it personal here and insurance. So let's say insurance. 
insurance. So there we have that. And then I'll come back on over and I'll say this is going to be insurance. And then insurance under personal, 1010 personal and insurance. Insurance. Okay. And then this one we did last time. And so then we have these items. So we're going to say, let's imagine that this is, let's imagine it's like software or something like that. It put it into bills and, and utilities. If I go back on over here, let's say auto, da, 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 no, so I'm going to say, I'm going to call it software, software, and I'm going to give it an expense type of account. So we'll imagine that these are going to be software, the items. So I'm going to say, this is going to be then software and no sub account then i'll just call it software 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 soft we should be able to copy and paste but i kind of like just typing them in there just to make sure i don't mess anything up so this is going to be software and software okay and then we've got the transfers down here so uh, transfer you might say like you know what you know what what is it transferring to maybe it's transferring from you know, one account to another account if it was a transfer or maybe they got the, the merchant wrong. Let's imagine this is going to transfer from one account to the other. If they if that what it is, they, they still call it just simply a payment. So I'm not sure exactly what they would want from that. Notice that it's coming out of the checking account. If it were coming out of, of like a business checking account into some other personal checking or something like that, notice the difference here than if it was on QuickBooks. Here, what I want to do is just simply not include it in income. I don't want to have it as an expense in income. So what I would want to do is I, I could put it under a transfer account or simply call it personal again. I can call it personal, even though it's it's a money going out. And then I might call it like a draw, right? I might say this is going to be personal, personal, and it's going to be a draw, meaning it's coming out of what we would think of as the business account, maybe to a personal account or something like that. Notice what that it's a little bit different than if I tried to do that on QuickBooks. If I tried to do that on QuickBooks and I said it's a per, it's a draw, I'd have to put it in into call it an equity account down here in order to take it out of take it out of there. And everything that's personal that I'm putting into QuickBooks, I would have to then call everything personal, basically an equity account or a draw, or I can use class tracking, which is a little bit more complex, to track out the, an income statement on the personal and business side. So again, class tracking is a little bit more complex over here so there's pros and cons once again if you're trying to just put together a, an income statement here so i'm going to call this then draws so we'll say this is personal and so we'll say this is personal and draws draws so we have that and then uh rent now you might have something like a like a, a rent or something let's say let's say we have let's say we have rent here and you might say well that i got rent maybe on my home and for my taxes Maybe I do a home office kind of calculation and you might say, well, then I should be, you know, breaking this out between some portion that's business and personal or something like that. And notice you can't really do that very easily with the transaction. I can't break one transaction between two things. You can do that a little bit more easily in accounting software. But again, there's no perfect solution to you if you have a home office, which you're going to have to depend on your tax preparer to help you with that. So if, if this was rent on like a, a home or something like that and you have a home office, then you might just want to put it into some kind of uh, expense account and then and then and adjust it when you do like a home office kind of calculation which would be breaking out the rent between the two categories so i'm just going to call it rent and say it's a business type of expense type of account and then once i once i get into my worksheet i might break it further out once i do like taxes or something like that so i'll say this is going to be rent and then and then uh, no subcategories. So I'm going to say this is going to be rent. And then this is going to be rent. And then the, the, the utilities or something like that, same kind of thing. I might say, hey, I, it, this utilities on my home maybe, but I work from home because I'm a gig worker now or something. That means that then you got to break it out maybe with a home office type of, of calculation. So that means that this amount would be broken out in some way. But once again, I'm just going to make sure that it's on kind of like the income statement for the business so that when I go to my tax preparer, I can tell them that and then they can make the adjustment for it. So I'm going to say this is going to be utilities, bills, utilities. I'll keep it there. Utilities. I would just call it utilities, not bills, utilities. But they got that one right. It's like one of the few, I think. And then Verizon Wireless. 
So this one, you know, again, your phone, you might be breaking out. You might say, hey, I use it 80% business, 20 personal or something like that. But you can't really break this account up here. Uh, what you could do instead is, is put it into one spot and then break it up with like a, like another little worksheet that you can basically use to break out that information. So I'm going to say, let's go back on over here and say that, uh, this is going to be, I like to call it telephone to, to have a phone expense different than utilities. So I'll make another one called telephone, telephone, telephone. Okay, so there we have that. And then a credit card, a uh, credit card pay. So this would be paying off a credit card. Once again, I don't want to deduct the payment of the credit card. What I want to do is take the expenses, the transactions from the credit card, which I can put into this Excel worksheet using the, you know, the institution thing to pull it in, <laughs> the bank feed thing, I guess. And then I, and then I can basically take the actual transactions and break them out between business and personal. And then when I pay off the credit card, that's a balance sheet transaction. It's not an income statement transaction. It's taken down the checking account, going into the, to the other account. So I would call this basically a, a, uh, a balance sheet type of transaction. So I'm going to call this, what did I call it before? I called it a, a transfer account, but I want to make it with a number in front of it. That might make it easier for me to sort it. And then the, the subcategory that I have a subcategory might be a, a transfer, but I'll keep it there. And then the same thing for the last one here, I'll say this is going to be a transfer with a number and there, and there we have it. So I think we've categorized everything now. Also just note that the other one that's kind of funny is auto, like your automobile expense, gas and that kind of thing. You might say, well, I use it for business and personal. And once again, taxes, you'll basically use a mileage method for it. So you can't really break it. There's nothing you can do. There's no software, whether you use QuickBooks or anything, that's going to break it out perfectly. If you're going to use a mileage method for taxes and whatnot. So you might have to just record it as an expense and then tell your tax professional, here's what I paid for gas and whatnot. And then you, you do the mileage method or whatever you need to do for any adjustment with it. So now we've got, we've got kind of the raw data, uh, that has been put in place here. We've, we've basically categorized it. It still looks kind of messy. But now what we want to do is take this information. We can sort it by category now. I could sort it by category. And notice if I sort it from top to bottom by category, the ones that we label personal, which we put a number in front of it, will be on top now. And that means we can kind of, I can whittle them out. And if I'm doing the most basic kind of income statement, I can just whittle, I can just basically whittle those out easily because they're all going to be on top. That's why I use the account numbers. And then, and then we've got the accounts then that are going to be down below. Now also note that the income accounts here are, it, you know, it's by, it, it then has bills because bills happens to be next in alphabetical order. So the next item I might want to change here is the income accounts to put them on top, right? I might want to give them an account number so that they, that they'll be on top. And then all the expenses then will be down, will be down below and no personal items are down below. And so now basically everything from, from here down, I can basically see as kind of an income statement, still kind of an ugly income statement because I have multiple items in these categories. I'd like to group these categories together. And that's what we'll think about basically doing uh, next time.